So I've watched the series and I have so many questions. However, I've been told under strict instructions that we can't give away any spoilers <laughs> as everything's being kept under lock and key. Nice. So for those who aren't familiar with the comic books, what can you tell us about the show? Lock and Key is about this family. The father is murdered under mysterious mm -hmm. circumstances and the, the mom takes her three kids and moves to his ancestral home in Massachusetts to this place called Key House. And Key House, it turns out, is filled with all these magical keys that have incredible properties. There's nothing really like it on air. It is based on the best-selling graphic novels um, by Joe Hill and Gabriela Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. It's like a Stranger Things meets a Harry Potter, sprinkle a little Chronicles of Narnia, maybe some Lost in Space. It, and it's a yeah. show that everybody can watch, like kids, adults, the whole family and I kind of like that because and there's not a lot of shows like that that entertain everybody exactly it's a story essentially about this yeah. family who has been through before the story starts this awful trauma yeah and they move across country into their father's old ancestral home mm -hmm. that's full of mystery Key house and they don't really know anything about him about it and a lot of his life and who he was and how he died are mysterious and in this new house they discover these magical keys. How are the keys helping the family, and especially the kids, to kind of cope with this grief that they're going through? Oh, good what, I, what I like so much about the comics, and what I hope comes across in the show, is that underneath all the magic, there's a story that I think is really beautiful about what it means to be a kid, and what it means to grow up, and what it means to grow up with trauma, you know, and how that changes mm -hmm. you, and how you can grow those changes into your body and how you can, how it changes the relationships mm. you have with your siblings and your parents. Gosh, and each kid processes it so differently. Mm. And I think uh, you tie that to the mother who can't see the magic and so thinks that the isolation from them is just because of her bad parenting and their grief. That adds another layer of complexity mm -hmm. for the kids that they can't talk to their mom about this. They're trying to figure out who they are mm -hmm. now in this new place and the keys are this wonderful metaphor for discovering your identity because they allow you to change things about yourself or change your world in some way and I think ask that fundamental question if you had that ability to do that would you and should you. If in real life you could discover one of these keys and use it what key would you choose to use? I would choose the anywhere key uh -huh. um, because the idea of being able to go anywhere and everywhere would be quite exciting. With the number of times I've locked myself out of my apartment and the amount of money I've spent on locksmiths, if yeah. I could just have my apartment key <laughs> <laughs> with me at all times, that would save me a lot of hassle. The mood that I'm in today, it's like mm -hmm. uh, the ghost key because mm -hmm. it, it's the most mysterious one. It has, you can, you can fly, you can turn invisible, and you can talk to the dead. And it's sort of all three powers yeah. wrapped up in a single key. I, it feels like it has a lot of uh, potential. Potential. What was your favorite key, I guess, to work on in the adaptation and filming process? The crown of shadows key, where you put this crown on and you can control shadows and turn them into, you know, your minions or your monsters or yeah. And so that's really a cool idea, and it works great in a comic book. But then trying to actually turn create shadow monsters on set and turn them into um, you know, living creatures was a really hard challenge. And what about you, what was your favorite key? I think it would be the head key because of the creative challenge that it presented. And then in the comic book, you stick the key in the back of your neck and it opens up your head like a lid, mm -hmm. um, which works very well in the comic, but for TV that would be pretty grotesque. So in our version of the head key, uh, a door appears and when you walk through it, you enter your own brain. Those were some of my favorite scenes and okay. then it made me wonder, oh my gosh, I don't even want to know what's in my head. It'd be a bit <laughs> scary. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just quickly talk about uh, what it was like having the chance to actually work with, is it Joe Hill, Joe who Hill, actually yes. wrote the comics, um, and having that, you know, it's awesome to have that resource. The best part of it was is that he let us expand that world and do new things, come up with new keys, come up with new characters, come up with new scenes and scenarios. And he not only embraced it, he participated in that process with us. And so he was really a, he was a very much a, not just a supporter, but also a collaborator. I'm glad the, we got to jump into his mind with this great. whole, right. you know, <laughs> series. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you.